Today I want to talk about some books that are just barrier entry into the fantasy genre. Maybe you're somebody who goes to your local bookstore and sees all the fantasy titles there and gets a little intimidated by the amount of books that are there, the length of them, and you don't really know where to start. Is it something you're even going to like? You hear all these phrases of different lands, foreign names that are just hard to pronounce, like it's hard, it's, it's intimidating, you don't know what to do. You have to imagine a world that's not like ours. That's that's scary. So that's the goal today is to get you to start reading fantasy and hopefully if you already read fantasy and you're here this will be able to get you to find some books you haven't heard of or to pique your interest on adjacent type things you like. That being said my name is Graham. Welcome to the channel and let's jump in straight into our first pick. So you're somebody who dabbles in romance. You're someone who likes reading romance novels and as you're on the romance novel TikTok and or Instagram reel feeds and you go through, you are beginning to see a lot of things about this book, I would assume, A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is fantasy romance. It's a really popular one that's out right now and huge. And well, it's very easy to get into. It's gonna hit all the tropes that you want in a romance novel. And it's actually, to kind of put it in a thing that you already might know that's fantasy, it's kind of Beauty and the Beast adjacent. And so you're going to get all the type of stuff you like in the romance section, especially if you like the spice. If you don't like spice in your romance, this book might not be for you, but this is a great starter fantasy novel and gets you into a series if you like the romance spice. If you're someone who likes romance but doesn't like it spicy, meaning explicit, well then we have another book for you. This one is a little bit longer than what I said. I have it a little bit over 500 pages, but it still is a really good romance, and that is The City of Brass. This one is a really great novel as well, but this is more of a Eastern Indian type story. It's a love story, and also it's a fantasy story, and it follows this girl who's pretty much been cursed, and there's genies and things like that in involved. And so this does a really good job of being a really good beginner entry level for the fantasy type stuff while staying in that little romancey trope as well. So I think this is a really good comparison to the Court of Thorns and Roses. This one's spicy, this one's not spicy. If you want something that's more LGBTQ friendly for romance, well then I think these are the best magical realism out there and it's TJ Klune, The House of the Cerulean Sea. I love this story so much. There's so much emotion involved and it brought tears to my eye and it's a great love story as well. Again, not spicy, but it hits the feels very, very, uh, very good. It closes well. TJ Klune's a fantastic author. You can't go wrong with his other novels too. The Lives of Puppets and Under the Whispering Door, I believe is what they're called. They're all amazing, but this one has a sequel coming out. It will get you into a little series and it's great. And it's only about 300, a little over 300 pages, almost 400 pages. And so it's a pretty easy read really good to consume and just a great story about a guy who is a little bit sad but has to go do this job at an orphanage and begins to fall in love with the kids there and the orphanage owner that's pretty much it and but the kids aren't normal kids they're kids with magical powers and so it's pretty cool i, I really recommend this book if you want to get into that jumping off of that well let's go into some noir detective type stuff if you love those detective type thrillers or something to be able to figure out well i highly recommend jim butcher's stormfront this is the first of the dresden files which is about a cop who lives in chicago but that cop isn't a normal cop he is a wizard and he gets through some crazy stuff there's magic involved it's based in our real world there's gonna be vampires there's gonna be a little bit different people living in Chicago than what you're used to. He deals with all the fantasy type people. And so if you're not familiar with those type of creatures, this explains it very, very well, but in a cop setting. And so you would enjoy this. And it's a really quick read. It's about 360 pages and you can just cruise through this really fast. I think I read this in just a few hours. It wasn't very long because it was very easy to read and a lot of fun as well. Now, if you're somebody who as a young kid read Harry Potter, then you're familiar with school magic and things of that nature. If you're someone who just got out of school and wants to have that feeling of being in school as you jump into fantasy, well, then I recommend A Deadly Education by Naomi Navik. It is a very short read. It is only 310 pages, but it's about a girl who is in this magic school who 
Well, she's super powerful, probably the most powerful person in there, but she hates everybody. So she's this introverted person as she learns about her powers. And there's a little bit of romance in there as well. She finds somebody that she hates who ends up liking them a little bit, but makes a lot of friends along the way as well. I highly recommend this one. And I just, I really enjoyed the series. There's two other books after this. And again, it's a really short time read. If you're somebody who wants to just jump right in to chivalry, knights, things of that nature, and wants to, you know, have your King Arthur type story, but not necessarily get into King Arthurian tales. Well, I want to point you towards Tamara Pierce, Alana, the first adventure. This is the first of the Song of the Lioness Quartet, and it opens up this world that Tamara Pierce has created. This actually is a young adult fantasy. However, I would argue it pairs well with the adult fantasy as well. There is a young girl who's a twin, and she decides that she wants to go be a knight. And the boy, twin, decides he wants to be the magic user. And so they decide to cut Alana's hair and switch places without the person knowing that's taking them to these areas. And so Alana is in the guise of a male inside this night school to become a knight. And you get to learn all about what she goes through and the hardships she has because she gets discovered and things of that nature. It's a great series. I love it a lot. And you have just the knight fighting and all that type of stuff. There's a little bit of mysticism, mysticism. There's some animals that talk and things of that nature. But Alana is a great read if you want to just go straight into knights and things of that nature. If you are someone who loves historical fiction, well then I recommend The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I can make this argument that everybody should read The Poppy War no matter what type of book you like because this is stemmed in a lot of Chinese history but also it really dives into war in not a glamorful way. Like there are things that happen in this book are sometimes hard to read because it does go into war a lot. But if you're already somebody who's in that historical fiction, you're used to a little bit of war and things of that nature. And this has stemmed a lot in that history. And so you're gonna get a lot of information about what happened to China in World War One and Two, I believe. This book covers a lot of what happened to those people there while being a full fantasy novel involving somebody who has the powers of like the Chinese Zodiac, for example, be able to take it upon them and release that energy and you'll be able to learn about that too. This one is probably the one and one of the other ones I mentioned are probably the one that has the biggest words that are sometimes hard to pronounce, but the overarching story is incredible and just get prepared to be emotionally upset about this because it's very good writing and can make you definitely cry. Also check out the trigger warnings if you don't want to read about certain things on this book too but it's very easy. It reads like a YA and will jump you right into a really great fantasy series. Last but not least, if you're somebody who as a kid loved pirate adventures or loved The Princess Bride, for example, and you've also been hearing about this person named Brandon Sanderson a lot. If you watch booktube a lot, you're gonna hear a lot of fantasy booktubers talk about Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson and The Way of Kings and all this type of stuff being their barrier entry to the fantasy genre, which those books are true, but they're pretty long and you have to get behind a huge magical system and that's Brandon Sanderson's forte is intense magic. Well, he did write another novel last year that I do feel fits really, really well for an entry level into fantasy in general, and that's gonna be Tress and the Emerald Sea. This is a great pirate princess bridey adventure following Tress. Someone she likes goes missing and she decides she's gonna go steal a ship and sail the seas and gain a crew and the seas aren't quite what you're used to. It's magical seas and it's explained very easily and a lot of fun. You really get to know Tress very, very well. You don't even know a lot about magic or the Cosmere, it is a Cosmere novel. To read this book, you just go along for the ride because it's it's interesting. The sea is not water, it's made of this like aether, these like spores essentially which is pretty fantastical, but it's explained so easily and well. I think that's what Brandon Sanderson does really well is it's not complicated writing or prose. You're able to just go in there and have a quick, easy read. And that's what Trust the Emerald Sea is. Fantasy is just a fun genre to read. And I hope these books are a great starting point for you because they're a great starting point for me. None of them are very challenging or hard to be able to pick up and read if you're into those genres. And also I, I put a label on them of like, if you like historical fiction, read The Poppy War. You can start with any of these and I promise you'll have a really good time with it. And there's nothing against Harry Potter or things of that nature too. Hunger Games, for example, those are fantasy novels and they're great starting points as well. Very easy and accessible 
and I highly recommend being able to read those too if you so desire. Thanks for watching. I hope this starts you on your fantasy journey and I hope if you've already read fantasy you found something new that you haven't really thought of before. Let me know in the comments if there's any other recommendations you'll have for new people. I haven't read every single fantasy novel out there and I hope to see you guys next time. Toodles!